And welcome to the Deadbolt Horror Show, Friday the 13th Special Edition. Once again, I am forever your court horror host this evening, the Keymaster Slash of Poe. Once again, my friends, it is always a pleasure to congregate with you all in the name of horror. Today, my friends, we are taking a trip down memory lane, as well as through the future and history of Friday the 13th. So let's get in with a little history lesson, my friends. Long considered a day of harboring of bad luck, Friday the 13th has inspired a 19th century secret society, as well as an early 20th century novel, as well as a horror film franchise, and not one, but two unwieldy terms, Pakistakadikophobia, as well as Frigistikadikophobia. The described fear of this supposedly unlucky day. The fear of the thirteen, just like walking under a ladder, or crossing paths with a black cat, or breaking a mirror. Many people hold fast to the belief that Friday the 13th brings bad luck. Through its uncertain exactly when this popular tradition began, negative superstitions have swirled around the number 13 for centuries. While Western cultures have historically associated the number 12 with completeness, there are 12 days of Christmas, 12 months and zodiac signs, 12 labors of Hercules, 12 gods of Olympus, and 12 tribes of Israel. Just to name a few examples, its successor, 13, has a long history as a sign of bad luck. The ancient code of Hammerbury, for example, reportedly omitted a 13th law from its list of legal rules. Though this was probably a clerical error, superstitious people sometimes point to this as proof of 13's long-standing negative associations. Fear of the number 13 has even earned a psychological term, Triskanindikophobia. Why is Friday the 13th unlucky? According to biblical tradition, 13 guests attended the Last Supper held on Monday, Thursday including Jesus and his twelve apostles, one of whom Judas betrayed him. The next day, of course, was Good Friday, the day of Jesus' crucifixion. The seating arrangement at the Last Supper is believed to have given rise to a long-standing Christian superstition that, having thirteenth guest, at a table was a bad omen, specifically that it was courting death. Though Friday's negative associations are weaker, some have suggested they also have roots in Christian tradition. Just as Jesus was crucified on Friday, 
Friday was also said to be the day Eve gave Adam the fateful apple from the tree of knowledge, as well as the day Cain killed his brother Abel, the Thirteen Club. In the late 19th century, a New Yorker named Captain William Fowler, 1827 to 1897, sought to remove the enduring stigmata surrounding the number 13, and particularly the unwritten rule about not having 13 guests at a dinner table by founding an exclusive society called the Thirteen Club. The group dined on the 13th day of the month in room 13 on the Knickerbocker Cottage, a popular watering hole Fowler owned from 1863 to 1883 before sitting down for a 13-course dinner members would pass beneath a ladder and a banner reading mortuary te salatrimus latin for those of us who are about to die salute you four former u.s presidents chester a arthur Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, as well as good old Theodore Roosevelt, would join the 13th Club ranks at one time or another. Friday the 13th in pop culture, an important milestone in the history of Friday the 13th. Legend in particular, not just the number 13 occurred in 1907 with the publication of the novel Friday the 13th, written by Thomas Lawson. The book told a story of a New York City stockbroker who plays on superstitions about the date to create chaos on Wall Street and make a killing on the market. The horror movie Friday the 13th, released in 1980, introducing the world to a hockey mask-wearing killer named Jason Voorhees. And it is perhaps the best-known example of the famous superstition in pop culture's history. The movie spawned multiple sequels, as well as a comic book, novelists, video games, related merchandise, and countless terrifying Halloween costumes. What bad things happened on Friday the 13th? On Friday, October 13th, 1307, Officers of King Philip V of France arrested hundreds of King's Templars, a powerful religious and military order formed in the 12th century for the defense of the Holy Land. Imprisoned on charges of various illegal behaviors, but really because the King wanted access to their financial resources. Many Templars were later executed. Some cite the link with the Templars as the origin of the Friday the 13th superstition. But like many legends involving the Templars and their history, the truth remains murky. In more recent times, a number of traumatic events have occurred on Friday the 13th, including the German bombing of Buckingham Palace, September 1940, the murder of Kitty Genovese in Queens, New York, March 1964, a cyclone that killed millions of people in Bangladesh, November 1970, the disappearance of a Chiklai Air Force plane in the Andes. October 1972, the death of the rapper Tupac Shakur, September 1996, and the crash off the coast of Cornia cruise ship, 
off the coast of Italy, which killed 30 people, January 2012. There you have it, my friends, a little Friday the 13th history. We have a few little programs to deliver today in honor of Friday the 13th. We have up next a epic horror battle from Trent Duncan. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and enjoy this battle for Friday the 13th. Michael Myers taking on none other than Jason Voorhees. Enjoy this epic horror battle from Trent Duncan, my friends. asked for a doctor or stripper, not some hockey player or some William Shatner look-alike. Excuse me, pardon me, can a girl get a hand over here please? Kim, where do you want these? Look, you two have got to go because you're not going to ruin my bachelorette weekend.
Now that, my friends, was an epic horror battle. Make sure to subscribe to Epic Horror Battles and give a thank you to Trent Duncan for creating this master battle. Indeed, Friday the 13th always makes me giddy. <laughs> But I say thank you for joining me here in the Dead Vault Horror Show for our Friday the 13th special. Once again, I am forever your cult horror host, the Keymaster Slasher Poe. As well as, I would like to take this time now to say thank you to ButcherMedia.com for supplying you with the Dead Vault Horror Show around the world. As well as, make sure to tune in to the Vortex on HorrorHost.net. As well as, make sure to get your Roku channels and add Ultra Toxic Television, as well as Betamax, Otherworld's Television, and Indie Horror Online. And make sure to subscribe to Sony Fernandez on YouTube, as well as Corey Clayton. Indeed, my friends, make sure to check out the Lake Villa Vamps cartoon on Sony Fernandez YouTube, as well as My Three Demons on Corey Clayton. Indeed, my friends, I bid you adieu on this Friday the 13th. I am forever your cult horror host. The Keymaster Slash of Poe. And without further ado, I would like to introduce you to a little snippet of my Centerbyte stories, available now on the Butcher Media web store. So make sure to get your copy of the Centerbyte stories, as well as your official Dead Vault Cult membership card and your horror host certificate of appreciation, as well as an autograph picture custom to you from me. So once again, my friend, from the depths below, into the fog we go. Disneyland Rituals The wind began to pick up just before dawn. Closing the bedroom window, Timothy Green cracked a smile. Today, little Jen Pova would be coming by with her aunt to have breakfast. Picking his fingers, Timothy began to grind his teeth. Sweating in anticipation, he will finally carry out his experiment. Dropping his head to his lap, the dog began to bark, and the rusted brakes on the pickup truck could be heard screeching outside. Finally, Timothy shouted, opening the screen door and waving hello to Jen and her Aunt Ruth. I'm glad you could come, Timothy's mother said. Hey, Jen, you want to see my new fort? Timothy asked. With a glance of approval from Aunt Ruth, she said, Go ahead, dear. And the two ran off behind the house. Walking behind the abandoned cars and the overbrush of the trees, it's just a little further over here, Timothy said, 
laughing under his breath. Stopping in front of a pile of dirt and a big hole in the ground with a big blue drum. Not much of a fort, Tim, Jin replied. It's a magical fort. You have to get inside and it takes you to your favorite place, Timothy said with a straight face. You're telling me I can go to Disneyland? Right now, if I get in? She asked. You can go there, you can go anywhere, Tim assured with a smile on his face. Jen crawled into the 50-gallon drum buried in the hole. I just have to put the lid on and you'll be in Disneyland in no time. He said, shaking. Yay! I'm going to have breakfast with Goofy, she said, laughing and giggling. Tell him I said hi, Timothy said, laughing, as he tightened the lid on the 50-gallon drum. When the drum was completely sealed, Timothy began to practically cover the drum containing Jennifer with dirt. Standing on top of the drum, he began to call forth the demon, holding his blade in the air and reciting the incantations properly. He began stabbing the 50-gallon drum repeatedly, over and over. The shouts from Jen Pulver could be heard, her screams, her gurgling loudly. As she could do is scratch at the blue plastic lid of the inside of the drum. Shouting louder the incantations, Timothy began to become enraged. Clenching his blade tightly, he stabbed furiously at the blue drum. His sword was covered in thick blood and matted hair. This has to work, he thought to himself. She was a virgin, and she had red hair, like the book said. He ran back to the house just in time to get the first serving of pancakes. In an awkward pause, Ruth asked, Where is Jen, Timothy? Looking into her eyes with a blank stare, he muttered under his breath, She went to Disneyland.